Hello everyone, I'm Dustin Ruiz, one of your police officers here at the College of Marin Police Department. The mission of the College of Marin Police Department is to enhance the educational process by providing a safe and secure environment through professional service to our college community. As members of the college community, we all share the responsibility of maintaining a safe educational environment. Your safety and well-being are the primary concern and responsibility of the police department. As a college staff member and as a designated government disaster service worker, you have the responsibility to be prepared to provide emergency assistance in support of the students and your fellow employees. Today is a great day to start preparing for disaster. To familiarize yourself with emergency procedures on campus, please read through a copy of the College Emergency Guidelines Handbook, either a physical copy or a digital copy available via the Police Department's website. Inside the handbook, you'll learn about campus emergency response centers, evacuation areas, and emergency phone numbers for first responders. Fires, earthquakes, other environmental threats, and utility blackouts are also discussed, and there's a good list for your basic emergency supply kit. Contacting the police is one of the most important things the community can do to advise first responders of a situation that needs our attention. The COMPD partners with the Fairfax Police Department to receive calls and dispatch officers. If you're not near a campus landline phone, put dispatch's phone number in your cell phone, which is 415-485-9696. Dialing 911 from a cell phone will likely take longer as it will be transferred to a larger agency down to us. Please note that the college's phone system does not require you to dial a 9 before dialing 911. It's important to know the differences between an emergency and a routine call. Life-threatening medical emergencies such as severe chest pain, breathing issues, uncontrolled bleeding, burns, or unconsciousness are considered emergency situations, as well as violent incidents like physical fights or attacks. Other examples include psychological crises, suspicious behavior, a criminal incident, or dangerous animals. The police department can't be everywhere at all times, so we rely on our community for these reports. Remember, if you see something, say something. The College of Marin has partnered with Alertus Technologies to help provide a diversified emergency alert system throughout the campus properties. Alertus provides customizable mass notification systems that uses a variety of methods to rapidly get critical information to the campus community and advises on how to respond. Examples of alert methods can include wall-mounted message beacons like I have here, an audible visual signaling device that sounds and flashes to capture attention that also displays messages. Currently we have approximately 30 beacons for deployment. We also have computer screen banners which have full screen alerts which appear on any network campus computer screens which get attention and can also produce sounds too. We have mobile device alerts. You can download an app to your phone or other device to allow for push notifications to be received. We also have TVs mounted in common areas such as computer labs, registration areas, etc. that can also be used to display alerts. We have public address speakers which are consisting of high power speaker arrays. They are mounted on buildings and the speakers can broadcast sirens, pre-recorded messages, or speech-to-text announcements. The system can be used for emergency situations, such as weather-related events, armed shooter incidents, bomb threats, terrorist threats, chemical spills, or any number of emergency conditions. Recipients of an alert should inform others who may not have received it to calmly follow the instructions given and await further alerts or instructions from first responders. The college can customize alerts to different departments, groups, or certain campuses in order to get you the critical information you need. In the event of a major disaster, you might need to shelter in place and survive on your own resources for days without power or utilities. Remember that if power is out, gas pumps won't work, ATMs won't work, and grocery stores will be closed. Disaster planning is about keeping you safe, warm, and fed after a disaster. Since you spend about a quarter of your adult life at your workplace, it's wise to consider you may be on campus if a disaster strikes. In 2020, the College Marin Police Department purchased four emergency provision cabinets. The cabinets contain emergency supplies that may be accessed by breaking the entry glass in an emergency. Keys to the cabinets are maintained by the police and the maintenance office. The cabinets are only intended in case you're not able to get to your own resources, so they're not there in case you forget to bring your lunch that day. They're only for emergencies only. Where are the cabinets? They're located at IVC in the main building at the bottom floor of the West Hall and at the Kentfield campus in the Student Services cafeteria, the Academic Center second floor, and the SMN second floor lobby. The police department will monitor, replenish, and replace supplies inside the cabinets as necessary. 
An inventory checklist with expiration dates for specific items makes the cabinets easy to maintain. What's inside the cabinets? They contain various safety items in categories such as food, water, sanitation, lighting, tools, equipment, blankets, and first aid. What kind of food is inside? Cases of food bars that provide high calorie nutrition for up to 180 meals. They probably don't compare to your favorite comfort food at home, but they're meant to keep you fed until help arrives. Also of importance, the cabinet contains portable AM radios, which can provide crucial information after a disaster. There's light sticks, which provide a reliable lighting source, space blankets, which are great for keeping warm, crowbars, portable toilets, hard hats, rope, and yes, even duct tape. Emergency strike anytime and anywhere. Is your office prepared to get through one during working hours? Knowing the location and contents of each cabinet gives people an extra boost and a means to survive until rescuers arrive and service resumes. Thank you, Dustin, for explaining aspects of our emergency response plan. Our emergency response plan includes our emergency response guidelines handbook, how to contact the College of Marine Police Department, our Alertus emergency notification system, and our emergency provision cabinets. The college has three cabinets that we've added recently. These are located at the Miwok Aquatic Center, the Child Study Center, and right here at the Jonas Center. If your department wants to purchase one of these emergency provision cabinets, contact me at the police department and I can refer you to the same vendor. The cost for this order is currently $2,400 each. Be sure to make a mental note of the location of these cabinets as additional cabinets may be added to the campus in the future. Okay, leave to the right. Let's talk about automated external defibrillators or AEDs. Sudden cardiac emergencies happen without warning and AEDs can be the difference between life and death. Earlier in 2022, the college had approximately 16-1-6 AEDs on our campuses. They're located at Student Health, Performing Arts, Physical Education, in police vehicles, and police department offices. And that was it for both campuses. This is what one of our existing units looks like. It's made by Phillips and it's red. The police department utilized an AED just like this to save the life of a UPM member on campus. The patient was not breathing, did not have a pulse, yet our police department was able to utilize an AED and revive the patient before the fire department or paramedics arrived. The fact is, these devices are manufactured with a novice user in mind. They're built to be very intuitive. You don't need to be a first responder, a medical professional, or be trained in CPR to use one. A novice user can at the very least obtain the AED, open the lid, and just follow the audio prompts. I have to thank Dr. Kuhn for his commitment to your safety on our campuses. Dr. Kuhn secured the funds to purchase 660 AEDs to supplement the AEDs we already have. The units are made by Zoll, they're orange, and they're located in white metal cabinets. The model, the Powerheart G5, is completely automatic. Be advised that the video you will see will show this particular model. However, you may encounter an AED that looks different in your personal or professional life. All AEDs work in the same general way. The danger lies in not using them. Just open them up and simply follow the instructions. Although training is not necessary, this video is intended to give you the confidence to use them in an emergency. Make a mental note of the AED locations as you visit different areas of the campus. You never know when an emergency will happen. These AEDs are placed throughout the campuses in alarmed white metal cabinets with a glass face. The cabinet will be labeled with the word defibrillator on it in red letters and you'll see these signs present as well. In addition, you'll also see some window decals that'll give you an indication of which room the AEDs are located in. Let's open one of these up together. Take the unit out of the cabinet, the alarm will sound, and take it to where the victim is located. Pull the unit out of the carrying case. 
This red pouch contains several items, one of which is scissors if necessary to cut clothing to expose bare skin on the chest. Simply open the lid and follow the audio prompts. Okay. Stay calm. Follow these instructions. Make sure 911 is called now. Begin by exposing patient's bare chest. Remove or cut clothing if needed. Scissors here. When patient's chest is bare, remove the white square package from lid of AED. Tear open white package across dotted line and remove pads. Two pads are in here. Peel one of the white pads completely from blue plastic. Begin pulling from the tabbed corner. Here. Peel one of the and white here. pads completely from blue plastic. Place the green plastic CPR pad on the chest if directed to do so audibly. You'll find this instruction sheet attached to each one of the AEDs. It has 11 steps. It's in Spanish and in English on both sides. Let's go over the 11 steps in detail. Here are the steps to deploy an AED when you become aware of a possible need for one. Number one, is the patient responsive? Check to see if they respond to you. Number two, call 911. Direct someone to do this if someone is available. Number three, get the AED from the cabinet. The alarm will sound. Number four, take the AED out of the case and open the lid. Number five, remove clothing to expose skin on the chest. The attached red pouch contains several medical items, including scissors. Number six, attach the pads as directed. Number seven, do not touch the patient. Number eight, if required, the AED will automatically deliver a shock. Number nine, place the CPR pad in the center of the chest if so directed. Number 10, follow CPR prompts, which may require chest compressions. These are limited and audibly directed. Number 11, if instructed, give breaths. You may use the CPR pocket resuscitator mask included inside the red kit. Maintain CPR if directed until emergency medical personnel arrive. There is no danger in applying the AED pads to an unresponsive patient who does not need the AED. The AED will automatically detect the necessity of a shock and apply it as appropriate. Now let's watch a video of a scenario where you see the AED actually deployed. Keep in mind that our new units are automatic. They will deliver a shock automatically. You may encounter other units that give you audio directions to push a button to apply a shock. Cardiac arrest can strike without warning, affecting people of all ages and all fitness levels. The PowerHeart G5 Automated External Defibrillator from Zoll is a powerful solution to help improve the chances that an SCA victim will survive. Let's go through the steps of a rescue to demonstrate some of the G5's key features. Stay calm. Follow these instructions. Begin by exposing patient's bare chest. The G5 automatically starts working as soon as the lid is opened. There's no power button to press. This helps ensure a fast start to the rescue. Remove the white square package from lid of AED. Tear open white package across dotted line. Peel one of the white pads completely from blue plastic. Rescue Coach user paced voice and text prompts to guide users step by step through the rescue process. The AED recognizes actions taken and ensures that the rescuer completes every critical task before moving on to the next. The G5's non polarized electrode pads allow for fast, easy placement in either position on the patient's chest. Once the pads are in place, the G5 will quickly analyze the patient's heart rhythm and determine if a shock is required. Shock advised. Do not touch the patient. Remove green square package from lid of AED. Tear open green package and remove CPR device. Place CPR device on center of patient's chest between nipples. 
Place heel of one hand on CPR device. Place heel of other hand directly on top of first hand. Lean over patient with elbows straight. The G5 also helps rescuers of all skill levels perform high quality CPR compressions. Press, 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 press harder and fully release. Real-time, guideline-driven feedback technology guides rescuers on optimal rate and depth of chest compressions through voice, text, and visual prompts that help ensure the delivery of high-quality CPR. The G5 has several other unique features that help make rescues simple and effective, including dual-language capabilities. With a touch of a button, CPR instruction, iCPR corrections, and AED prompts can quickly switch from the primary language to a pre-programmed alternate language without delaying the rescue. The G5 also regularly conducts an in-depth series of automatic self-tests to ensure its battery, pads, and critical internal circuitry are rescue-ready at all times. The PowerHeart G5 AED with IntelliSent CPR from Zoll provides real-time guideline-driven CPR feedback to ensure delivery of high-quality compressions. One-button dual-language functionality and comprehensive self-testing give rescuers the confidence to act. For more information on the PowerHeart G5 AED, visit Zoll.com. Emergency preparedness is the responsibility of each and every one of us. Please visit our police department website to review this video, read about an emergency operations plan, view the emergency guidelines handbook, view our active killer video, read our environmental safety plan, and to sign up for emergency alerts on ComConnect. We have collectively taken new steps to prepare our campus for emergencies through our Alertus emergency notification system, our emergency provision cabinets, emergency drills, and now the deployment of an additional 60 AEDs. We can't predict natural disasters or emergencies, but we can predict what our failure to prepare looks like. Take advantage of these resources I mentioned. You can definitely save lives with this combination of equipment and knowledge. If you have questions or comments on campus safety, please feel free to contact me and or our police department. Thank you for your teamwork and thank you for your commitment to campus safety.